How y'all doing tonight? It's 8.30 and it is you unlimited. And y'all here we going hard in the paint. We are going hard in the paint right now. Yes. Come on in, come on in, come on in. If you are out there, come on in. I want to talk to you tonight. It's going to be an awesome night. There is a word from the Lord tonight, and I just know this on a bless somebody's soul tonight. When God dropped this in my spirit, I was like, you know what? This is it. Your thing. You unlimited tonight. Come on in, tag somebody, share this video, let them know that you unlimited is live. We are back tonight. Last week we had some few uh, few engagements, and so we had to um, kind of postpone. But tonight we are back in business. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Yes, we going hard in the paint tonight. I got my camouflage on. We're going after this thing tonight. There is nothing that is going to stop us. We have some things to talk about tonight, and we're talking about your thing, okay? You are unlimited, and tonight we are talking about your thing, amen? We are talking about how to get your thing off the ground, how to get your thing in place, how to get you moving in your thing, okay? The only way that you can be unlimited is if you lock into your thing. Amen. So I'm going to get started in about two minutes, about one more minute. It's 831 at 832. You know, we're going to be praying and we are going to get this show on the road. God has some great things in store for us tonight. And unfortunately, I cannot see your comments because I'm on a new system and I don't even know how to work at all. So please go ahead and comment, share, like everything. And I definitely will go back into the comments later on interact and do all those things but right now i just had to shoot out here and get this word out um and i will worry about the tech technical things later and you know i love to interact with you all i'm trying to figure out how i can see your um comments but right now it's not letting me do it so you know what hey just know that you are unlimited so we're going to go ahead and pray amen Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, God, because you are sovereign and you do all things well. We thank you, God, for your presence tonight. We thank you, God, for the word that you have for us tonight. We thank you, God, for showing us how to get into our thing, God. We thank you, God, because there is no limit in you, so there is no limit in us, God. We thank you, God, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. We thank you tonight, God, and we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, we look forward, oh God, to hearing what you have to say to our spirit. We look forward to hearing what you have to say to our soul. We look forward to hearing what you have for our minds tonight in the name of Jesus. So God, I just thank you. Let's, let's give God some praise for what he is going to do for us tonight. Now, if you look at the title, the title tonight is Your Thing, right? We are talking about getting your thing locked in, getting you locked into your thing, because it is going to be your thing that takes you to the next level. If you can hone it and get dedicated to your thing, there's nothing that can stop you. Now, there's so many, uh, so many different ways you can take that. But what we're talking about tonight is dedication. We're talking about the self-sacrificing devotion to something, the thing that you would that you give up sleep for, the thing that you don't eat about, the thing that you dream about, the thing that gets you up out the bed, the thing that makes you tick. Amen. The thing that you have decided is your purpose in life, the thing that is desired that you have desired to accomplish. The thing is that something such as an activity or something that makes a strong appeal to you as an individual. That's what we're talking about tonight. We are talking about getting locked into that. We're talking about getting locked into the thing that makes you tick, getting locked into the thing that makes you move forward, getting locked into the thing so that you can become unlimited. That's what this is about. This is about you being unlimited. Everybody has their thing. Everybody has their thing. And sometimes it can be difficult to hone into that thing. Somebody's thing may be um, singing. Somebody's thing may be dancing. Your thing may be sports. Your thing may be writing books. Your thing may be writing songs. Your thing, it may be uh, doing hair. Your thing may be doing nails. Your thing may be um, children's books. Your thing may be teaching children. Your thing may be teaching, period. Your thing may be ministering. Your thing may be being that evangelist that God has called you to be or being that prophet, preacher, or teacher that God has called you to be. Whatever it is, 
You have a thing and we have to figure out, first of all, what our one thing is. And you may have more than one thing, but we got to find out what is that thing that gets you moving? What is that thing that you can focus on and get dedicated to that can take you to your next level? That thing that can take you into victory, that thing that can open up doors for you or that thing that can shut some doors. Amen for you. Amen. We got to find out what your thing is and whatever your thing is, you have to get determined in it. Get determined and get in your mind and in your heart that you're going to be dedicated to mastering that thing. If it is doing nails, go to school, get your um your certificate, practice, do whatever it takes because nail techs make make millions of dollars nowadays. It's not like when I first started out that you were making thirty thousand dollars a year doing nails. Now, right now, girls are making hundreds and and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year doing nails because of the innovation and the technology and the and all of the new ways and all of the new additions to what you can do with just being a nail tech. And when I say just, I don't mean it to belittle or degrade the techniques or the, the um, craft. I'm saying that back in the day, to be a nail tech was not a $100,000 a year situation. But right now, you can step into that industry and become a millionaire and a boss doing nails. So if nails is your thing, honey, do those nails. Figure out what you have to do for the nails. Get your certificate practice learn all of the um learn all of, of the techniques learn everything that you can about your craft so that you can do that thing amen the bottom line is you have to get into figuring out what it is that's going to make you the top of your industry find out what is going to make you the the one on the cutting edge of your thing your thing could be uh sports if you Force. That means working out. That means getting your body in line. That means getting your mindset right. That means getting your attitude about the, what you have to do because a lot of times uh, when you're in sports, you have to have a certain level of discipline. You have to have a discipline to be in your workouts. You have to have a discipline to be um, in your, your, your eating habits. You have to have a discipline. You have to have a mindset to get on the court. You have to have a mindset to get on the field. You have to have a mindset to, to pick up that bat. You have to have a mindset of who you're going to be when you pick up that bat. Who are you going to be when you hike that ball? Who are you going to be? Are you going to be the top of your field or are you just going to be out there taking up space? We don't that just take up space out here. Uh uh. You are unlimited. And it's time that we hone into our craft. It's time that we hone into those skills to make us the top of our field, to make us the one that stands out, to make you be to make you become the one that is the expert in your field. How do you do that? You study your craft. How do you study your craft? You get on YouTube University. You Google it. You find every book out there that has to do with it. If you cannot afford to go to a school for it, you figure it out. And I tell you right now, the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 13 that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When I'm talking about all things, that's all inclusive. That's nothing left out. That's anything and whatever. All means anything and whatever. So the Bible is saying that you can do anything or whatever through Christ that strengthens you. Now you know how I am. You know I want you to be able to um, operate in every principle, every protocol, every proclamation and declaration that comes from this broadcast. And we know, hallelujah, that we are speaking kingdom principles. And if, if for kingdom principles to work for you, you got to get into the kingdom. Amen. So you know, I'm going to stop right here. And for all of you all who are not saved yet, I'm going to I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to ask you right now to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be Lord of your life because without him in your life, a lot of these promises and things do not pertain to you. Now, principles work and principles are transferable, but you want more than a principle. You want the anointing. You want more than a principle. You want the help. Amen. Because God can do something overnight that you've been trying to do for 10 years. Amen. If you get into principles and you learn how to call on him and he is your Lord and he sends you a helper, hallelujah, which is the Holy Ghost. And we understand that when we get saved, that it doesn't always have to be bells and whistles and thunderstorms and thunder and lightning. It can be a simple yes, Lord, in, in asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to be Lord of your life. And the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost comes in right then. And if you ask God to be your Savior tonight, I'm asking you to hashtag in the comments, hashtag saved. 
hashtag S-A-V-E. So we're going to pray this prayer of salvation so that we can get right into it, get you in the kingdom. So these principles and these protocols that we're going to talk about tonight can pertain to you and your life because I am expecting some great things tonight. I am expecting God to move on your behalf. I am expecting God to move on my behalf. I am expecting, I am expecting God to do some great things for us just being out here together in the name of Jesus. So pray this prayer with me and let's get you into the kingdom. God, your word says that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. So I come out here tonight asking you to forgive me for my sins. And I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I believe that he died for my sins and rose on the third day that I would live in eternity with him. Thank you, God, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. If you pray that prayer, you are now into the kingdom of God. And every principle that we talk about tonight, every prayer and every proclamation that we speak tonight will pertain to your life. Now, let's get back to this one thing. Let's get back to your thing. Let's get back into the mindset of finding out what is your thing getting them your thing in the forefront of your mind getting your thing before you every day how do you get your thing before you every day you write it down i'm gonna tell you what i did because some of you all have been on this journey this real estate exam journey with me and i am happy and proud to report with the praise that i have my real estate license hallelujah i passed the exam, you know, guys, you know, I was out there, you know, I, I had to go back and go back and go back. And I was not ashamed because I had made up in my mind that I was not going to quit until I achieved the goal. The goal was to pass the exam. That was the first, the short term goal was to pass the exam. And some of you all know my journey. I, you have to have 80 to pass. Three times I got 78 and three times I got 79. We won't even discuss the whole trial of it, but I'm here to tell you and report that I don't even know what I got, but I know I got more than 80 because when you pass it, they don't even tell you what your score is, how evil is that? But I'm here to tell you that I passed it. And when I saw the pass on that resort, I jumped and I cut a step in the place. I said, I don't care if you all know who I am. I don't care if you all know what I'm about to do. I don't care if you understand me picking them up and putting them down. But I shouted because I knew that the Bible says that I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do any and whatever thing it is that I set my mind to because it is Christ that strengthens me to do it. Amen. Because I trust in him. And the Bible says that the that he sent a comforter. He said that he would send a comforter, comforter to us who was the Holy Ghost, who would lead us and guide us into all truth. And the truth that he was talking about was the truth of the word of God. But when I say all truth, the Bible says all truth. All we already know means any and whatever. I needed the truth of how to pass that test test. I needed the truth on what I needed to do to get to my one thing. And that's what I'm here to tell you, that God will give you what you need. The Holy Ghost is there. If you ask God to be Lord of your life and you ask him to come in and be your savior, the Holy Ghost comes with that package. I'm here to tell you, hallelujah. So with that Holy Ghost, you take it, you lean on him, you, you depend on him, you ask him what you need to do, you pray about what you need to do. I'm here to tell you, he will give you the understanding, he will give you the ideas, he will give you the strategies and the plans on how to get something done. Don't believe me? Here, let me tell you. Just to get that, that test passed, I had to figure out a whole new way of studying. I had to figure out what it was I not doing, what was I missing, how was I doing, what was it. I was studying flashcards, but I wasn't really studying the word problem situation of it. And basically, the whole exam is nothing but word problems, but I was I was studying more of the vocabulary, trying to understand the terminology. But this last time I said, no, let's focus on these word problems. Let's focus on how things are worded. How did I get that? Because I sat, I sat and meditated and asked God, okay, I got to pass this test. I know you said I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. God, I need you to lead me to to all truth of what I need to do. And it came into my spirit to study how those word problems are worded. 
in this go round. I didn't get tripped up on not one word. I didn't get tripped up on any any uh any tricks that were slid in, any any similarities and answers. I felt like, oh my God, when I hit that last button, I said, I have passed this test. I didn't go back and look at another answer. I didn't go back and change any answers. I didn't go back and switch anything around. I believed God that I had it because I had studied the way the Holy Ghost told me to study. How did I get that? Because I sought him. Why? Because I knew the word says that he, I am able to do all things, any and whatever I set my mind to do. So I'm here to tell you, Set your mind on your one thing. Get your one thing in front of you and focus on it. Get your one thing in front of you and do not conform to anything else. Don't even let the spirit of doubt come in on you. Bind up the spirit of doubt. Bind up the spirit of fear. As a matter of fact, I bind it up for you tonight. I bind up the spirit of doubt. I bind up the spirit of fear. I bind up the spirit of complacency. I bind up the lethargic spirit. I bind up the spirit of, of slothfulness. Anything that was standing in the way and every obstacle that was standing in the way of you achieving your one thing. Tonight we are coming after our one thing. What is your thing? We're coming after our thing. What is your thing? What is it? Get it in front of you. Keep it in front of you. Write it down. Post it on your mirror. Post it in your bathroom. Post it on your refrigerator. Put it on a piece of paper and keep it in your pocket. Put it on a piece of paper and keep it in your purse. Find out what it is and hone in on it. Whatever your thing is, be determined in your heart and in your mind that you are going to be dedicated to mastering it. Get dedication. Don't allow anything to get in your way, knowing everything about your thing and how it works, knowing what your thing works, knowing knowing how you need to navigate in your thing. Amen. Learning how you need to navigate in the space that your thing is going to take you. Amen. Is your thing going to take you before kings and princes? Is your thing going to take you in front of the television camera? Is your thing going to take you on a football field? Is your thing going to take you on a baseball field? Is your thing going to take you on a basketball course? What is your thing going to do? Where is your thing going to take you? Find out how to navigate in that space that you're going to be in. Amen. We got to figure out how to move in that space so that we're prepared when we achieve our thing. So once we get over there, that we're not dumbfounded. We got to figure out where is this going to take me? Amen. But you first got to figure out what your thing is and hone in on it. Get determined that you're going to be the expert of your thing. <laughs> you're going to be the expert. Make sure that you're the person, that you are the go-to person for your thing. Amen. If your thing is singing, are, are you the go-to person for singing lessons? Are you the go-to person to find out a pitch? Are you a go-to? Are you the go-to person when they need someone to be a show opener? Are you a go-to person if somebody doesn't show up and they need a star? Are you the go-to person? Then they can they call you and say, "Hey, uh, we need a uh, we our, our our singer got sick tonight and we need somebody to take their place." Are you that go-to person that can show up and show out? Amen. Are you that go-to person? Hallelujah. Maybe somebody who was supposed to work a camera that night and then show up or got sick. Hey, are you the go-to person in that area that you can do audio and, and visual? Are you that go-to person that somebody can call on because you are an expert in your field? Are you the one who has um um has mastered your craft? Are you that person? Amen. Are you the person that people can rely on when they hear your name? It's like, oh, that's who you need to call. Are you that person? Amen. Do you need a mentor for your field? Are you someone who are just, who's just jumping into it and you don't know everything about it and you're trying to figure it out? Or maybe you have gone through the courses, but you just haven't gotten that hands-on experience. Maybe you need to call somebody who's doing what you want to do. Somebody out there knows what you want to do. Or somebody out there knows how to connect you to somebody who's doing what you want to do. You have to make sure that you make yourself available to be helped. You have to make sure that you are so in tune with your thing that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. It doesn't mean you can't allow what you think about yourself to keep you from connecting to somebody who may be able to help you advance in your thing. Amen. Your thing could be anything. 
for me. My thing has been real estate for the past year and a half. I had to connect with a real estate mentor. I had to connect with somebody who was going to show me the ropes. I was getting my real estate out, um, exam completed. But in the meantime, in between time, I still was out here making real estate moves. How was I able to make real estate moves? Because I connected to someone who was in the industry. I connected to someone who was doing what I wanted to do. I connected to someone who is successful in doing what I wanted to do, who had um, had a history of doing what I wanted to do. So when I approached this person and they actually um, allowed me to be a part of, of a situation where I could pay, because sometimes you do have to pay, I had to come out of my pocket for some hours to pay a certain amount of money per hour to sit with this person to pick their brain, to sit with this person to go on a ride along to see how this person operated. I had to pay for some classes with this person one on one. I had to pay for some classes with some people that he even contracts so that I can understand my industry. Amen. So I'm telling you, sometimes you do have to come out of the pocket out of your pocket, but it's all worth it. Amen. Do you need to go and go to speak to someone in your field? Don't be afraid. Don't. And most times people who are really successful in their field, they want to help somebody. You know why? Because it makes them feel good to give back. It's their way of giving back to the community. It's their way of giving back to someone who maybe they did not have. Because a lot of people who are successful in what they're doing, a lot of them did not have a mentor. A lot of them are sitting back saying, man, I wish I had someone who could show me what I'm showing people now. Amen. So, man, you don't even know. One day that could be you. One day it could be you saying, you know what? I'm going to take what I've learned in my industry and I'm going to do some workshops with some people. Or I'm going to do some mentorships for some people. You do not know where God is taking you. We can have a glimpse. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that God, that you will open up the eyes of those who are watching and listening tonight. That you will open up the eyes of those who will see and listen to this in the future. God, that you will open up their eyes and give them a glimpse of where they're thing can take them, God. Give them a glimpse, oh God, of what you can do for them in the future, God, if they hone into the thing that you have given them, God. And I'm thanking you and I'm believing, God, that every good and perfect gift comes from you, oh God, that it comes from above, Lord God, and everyone who has a purpose, Lord God, and everyone who has their thing in mind, Lord God, I'm asking you to bless it tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, you Lord, to fulfill every dream tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to show them how to navigate in this area so that they can learn what they need to learn to be prosperous in their thing, God. I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to bless their minds, oh God, with clarity and thought. I'm asking you, Lord God, to bless them, oh God, with the will to keep moving forward, God. And I'm binding up the spirit of failure, God. The Bible says that there is no failure in you, Lord God, so there's no failure in those who are in Christ Jesus, God. I thank you that there's no failure in us, God. So I'm giving you the praise the glory and the honor, Lord God, for us finding out what our thing is, Lord God, and for us operating in our thing, Lord God, for our thing giving us prosperity and wealth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to get our minds set that we are going to go for like 40 going north about our thing. Sometimes we have to um, push past our fatigue. Sometimes we have to push past our own feelings about things. Sometimes we have to push back past the things that we know, not what we what we uh, what we've heard. Sometimes you have to push past what you know. Amen. I knew that the real estate exam was hard, but I didn't care. I had to push past the fact that I knew it was hard. The people were telling me before I even got into it, you know what, that's hard. You know that's a hard test to pass. You know you ain't going to be able to pass that test. I don't know. I mean, I had people really tell me, hey, you know what, you you really switching up. You going from, from doing hair to selling houses. I mean, like, yeah, that's a that's a stretch. Somebody told me that's a stretch. And I said, you know what? Well, I'm about to be stretched in. I'm about, hey, Lord, stretch me. Amen. So I'm here to tell you all, you have to go hard for your thing. You have to go hard and don't stop. Don't stop for anything. Amen. Don't let anyone talk you out of doing your thing. Amen. Don't let anyone get in the way of you doing your thing. You got to get rid of the negative Nancy's. That's what I call them. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry if somebody's out, out there. Your name is Nancy. I mean, no disrespect. I'm just saying if there's someone in your life who does not believe in you and what you're doing, don't share it anymore with them. Don't try to convince nobody about what you're 
you're supposed to do. Your thing was given to you by God. And I'm here to tell you, all of us have a gift. All of us have a purpose. And if you are if you trust God enough to hone into your purpose, if you trust God enough to hone into your thing, I promise you he'll bless it. And I know that because the Bible says that all things, that means any and whatever thing works together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So I'm here to tell you, if you give it to God, he's going to bless it. If you say, okay, God, this is my thing, but I'm going to give it to you and let you bless it. Hey, you watch and see won't he bless it. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. And I, I, I will bank everything on that. Amen. Don't allow anybody to stand in your way of you being the best at what you do. Don't allow anyone to stand in your way of being the best at what you do. I'm here to tell you, um, y'all know I got to give you some word. I got to give you some word. Um, one of the one scripture about being the best is I'm going to take you to, I want to say it's Galatians. The sixth uh, chapter. Let's see what it says. Whoo! The sixth chapter and the ninth verse. It says, "And let us not be weary in well doing for doing it. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not." Don't be weary and well-doing. Do your best. Don't let anybody get in the way of you being the best that you can be at your thing. If being the best that you can be at your thing means that you go to bed at 10 o'clock at night because you have to get up extra early in the morning to do your thing so that you cannot hang out in the streets or you cannot hang out at the bar or you cannot hang out all night watching TV, Netflix or whatever with somebody and chilling. We ain't going to talk about that. But I'm here to tell you, if that's what you have to do for your thing, do your thing. You know what the well doing for your thing is. You know what you have to do well to get to your thing. You have, you know what you have to do well to make sure that your thing prospers. You have, you know, if that means eating right, if that means exercising, if that means reading more, if that means practicing more, if that means researching more, if that means getting more sleep, you know what it is that you have to do. And if you don't know, seek the Lord and let him lead you into all truth, into any and whatever truth is needed for you to get what you need to get so that you can be the best that you can be at your thing. And you have to get dedicated. I mean, don't let nothing get in the way of it. I mean, press forward, press forward. Get on a pace in your thing. Make sure that you have a routine to get in your thing. Make sure that even if you have your own schedule and you have to make your own schedule, write it down. Get your planner. Get it out. Go on um, Go on amazon.com. I have a planner out there that says don't give up. It's D-G-U. Don't give up. It's a planner and it helps you to plan your day out. It's right there on Amazon.com. I'm here to tell you it's a camouflage on the front. You see, I got my camouflage. The planner is a daily planner. It helps you to plan out your week. It helps you to plan. And it also has a day for gratitude. Go out there and get that planner and help you to, to plan out your day. If you're the person, if you're a person that you have your own schedule and you don't have to per se work for someone on a, on a schedule, but you don't know how to manage your time, that's a great tool to help you get your things in order so that you can be the best that you can be for your thing, for your area, for your place, for your purpose. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you want to hew out time so that you can focus. Maybe it's a couple of hours a day. Maybe you full, you work full time. Maybe you work full time and you say, you know what? I work all day long. And when I get home, I don't really feel like doing this, but you have to realize that you have to make a decision that your thing is what you have to do to get you off of that nine to five. That it's your thing that's going to make you be what you need to be so that you don't have to punch anybody else's clock. That it's your thing that's going to get you out of the rat race. Amen. So it's, it's, even if it means coming home from your job from nine to five and hewing out an hour to work on your thing every day. I promise you an hour a day working on your thing is better than no time working on your thing at all. Amen. I'm here to tell you that you have to press forward. The Bible says in Colossians 3 and 23. How do you do it? I'm going to share it with you in one second, but how do you do it? You want to make sure that everything that you do, that God is going to get the glory out of it. That's how you make sure that you're, you are operating in your thing. That's how you make sure that your thing prospers you. That's how you make sure, hallelujah, that you don't fall short in your thing. Amen. That you don't fall short or that you don't miss 
when it comes to your thing. The Bible says in Colossians 3 and 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Don't do it to make somebody see that you're doing something. Oh, yeah, I got my thing. You need to see me or doing something to get revenge. You know how we do sometimes. Um, you know, you want to be successful to shut somebody up about them thinking that you was never going to be successful. Oh, they said I wasn't never going to be nothing. So now I got to do this. And that's not why we do what we do. No, we do our thing wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. We do our thing so that God gets the glory out of our life. We do our thing so that when people see us doing our thing and operating our thing and they say, how did you do that thing? You say, you know what? It was the glory. It was the grace of God that I was able to learn this. It was the grace of God that this door opened up for me. It was the grace of God that he put the right people in the right place in the right time for my life so I can do the right thing so I can get my thing in order. Amen. You want to do your thing wholeheartedly as unto the Lord so that God gets the glory out of you. God does not get the glory out of you sitting on your gift. God does not get the glory out of you sitting on your plans. God does not get the glory out of you sitting on your talents. God does not get the glory out of you being slothful. He does not get the glory out of you being lazy. He does not get the glory out of you not pushing past past pain and and, and depression. When I say pain, I don't mean physical pain. I mean the pain of learning because sometimes it's painful to learn something new. Sometimes it's a it's a crunch in our brain. Sometimes if we haven't used those, <laughs> those neurons and they haven't fired in a long time. Amen. Some of you all have, haven't been in school for 30 years and God is telling you to get into this industry or get into that industry and you know you got to study to get into it. I'm here to tell you right now that you have to start. If you don't start it, you won't start it. Amen. But God wants you to get into your thing. God wants you to practice your thing. God wants you to get into the space that he has hewed out for you. And I'm here to tell you, press past the pain, press past the learning curves, press past Press past the burning of the midnight oil. I'm here to tell y'all some of those nights I would be talking to people. I'd be like, look, I got to go because I got to study. People say, hey, I need, hey, we're having this over there. You know what? I would come, but I got to study. You know what? That was painful. Some of the stuff I knew I was missing out. I missed out on some parties. I missed out on some fellowships. I missed out on some stuff. But guess what? I got my license. Guess what? Now I can go to wherever I want to go because I, I, I had even gotten into a routine so tight. Y'all, I'm here to tell y'all, I had got into a routine so tight that once I passed the exam, the next day I got up my alarm clock and on my schedule, I, I had to schedule my study time. My spirit said, I mean, my flesh said, oh, it's time to study. My, my spirit had to, to check my flesh and say, eh, 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 eh. we don't have to study that no more. You still got to study, but you don't have to study for that anymore amen because you passed that amen but i had got in such a routine that my flesh was ready to study amen my flesh was flesh was ready to get out some flashcards and and do my thing but i'm here to tell you if you get in a habit if you get a routine and your body will start to function in that thing amen it's just like building muscles it's just like exercising once you start exercising and once you start getting on a routine you cannot lay in the bed past a certain time because your body will start to cramp up because it is craving the routine your body begins to crave hallelujah the exercise your body begins to crave the fitness of the situation amen so i'm here to tell you get your thing get your thing in front of you Focus on your thing. Do your thing like you are presenting it to God. Do your thing like you want God to get the glory out of you. Do your thing. Get your thing. Everybody has a thing, but your thing is special to you. Make your thing special to you. Make sure that your thing is, is compelling you. Make sure that your thing is because of you and not because of somebody else. Not because you want to prove somebody else wrong. Not because you want to prove somebody else that you can do something that they thought you couldn't do. No, get your thing in front of you that God has given you to prosper you because I promise you, your thing will open up doors for you. Your thing will prosper you. Your thing will change your life. Your thing will change the lives of those who are connected to you. Get your thing and let God blow on it. Get your thing and let God get the glory out of it. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, do it unto the glory of God. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 
10 and 31, whatever you do, do it as unto the glory of God. Let God get the glory out of whatever your thing is. Amen. If your thing is basket weaving, let God get the glory out of your baskets, baby. Be the best basket weaving sister or brother there is on this side of heaven. Get your thing and, and master your thing. Amen. Find out whatever kind of... Uh, Whatever kind of, of basket, what is it, uh, bamboo you need, find out what you need. Find out how to soak that wood. Find out what you need. Get your bases. Get whatever it is that you have to do to make sure that that basket is the best basket, the most unique basket, the most sturdy basket, the fanciest basket. Do whatever it needs to be done so that you can be the best at what you need to do. Amen. Do your thing so good that when people see it, that they have to ask you, how did you do that? Where did you come up with that idea? How did you get to this place? And you have to say, it was God. God gave me the idea and I acted on it. It was God. God gave me the idea and I, he was grace, He graced me enough to move and it was God. And let him get the glory out of your life so that it impacts someone else's life so maybe it would cause them to jump into their thing you don't know how god wants to use you when you start moving in your thing amen my god i be so sweet in your thing okay be so sweet be so humble oh my god let god get the glory of it have so much humility about your thing so that when people speak to you about your thing or people see you moving and operating in your thing they can see that you command respect because you are great at what you do, but you also command respect because of the love and kindness that you have and the way that you carry yourself. Amen. I'm not saying, you know, be weak about it because I'm here to tell you that that meekness does not mean weak. Hallelujah. And saintly doesn't mean sucker at all. I'm saying be a beast at what you do. Y'all know that's my thing because I have on my mirror every day. Y'all know I have on my mirror right there. I'm a beast. I'm a beast at whatever I do. I'm going to beast it out. That means I'm going 100%. I'm not wavering. And once I get my mind made up, I'm going hard after it. And I'm not going to stop. Basically, I'm relentless about my thing. Amen. When I get something in my mind, I get relentless about it because I refuse to be defeated, not defeated by anybody, but I refuse to be defeated by my own lack of, 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 of belief. Amen. I bind up any lack of belief in my mind. I bind up any fear and I bind up any doubt. If God gives me an idea, I run on it. I don't know. I don't know how to tell you how to do it. All I can say is I trust him. I trusted him in, with all my heart and I lean not to my own understanding because in all my ways, I acknowledge him and I know that he's directed my path. So I don't get afraid of my path that I'm taking because I'm trusting him and I'm leaning on him with all my mind and all my heart and all my trust. Amen. I'm not leaning out to my own understanding. So when I jump into my thing, I jump into my thing running. Amen. The Bible was talking about Jesus in Isaiah 50 and 7. And I'm going to go there. I, I can't stop. I, I got to go to the word. I got to give you the word. I got to give it to you how you're giving it to me. So y'all understand why I be so hype, man. I be so hype about this. <laughs> I be so hype because I want you to get it. I want you to get into your thing. I want you to move in your thing. I want you to operate in your thing because it's your thing. Hallelujah. That is going to change the world. It's your thing. I can't even get this bang right. It's your thing. I'm trying to get out my eye. It's your thing that's going to open up the door. Hallelujah. It's your thing that's going to give you that prosperity. It's you honing into your thing that's going to keep you afloat. Amen. Hallelujah. It's your thing that's going to take you before kings and princes. It's your thing. Hallelujah. Once you understand, you got to get it and get dedicated and, and learn it, earn it. Do whatever you got to do to hone into your craft. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 50 and 7, he says, Whew. For the Lord God will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded, therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Set your face like a flint. What does that mean? Flint is a hard substance, is a hard rock. It is a sedimentary rock. That means that it is not going anywhere. It means that when you set your face like a flint, it says that you're expecting some opposition. It says that you're expecting some obstacles. You're expecting some challenges, but you have made up in your mind beyond a shadow of a doubt that come hell or high water that you're going to achieve the goal that you have set before you, that you have made up in your mind that you're not going to look to the left and you're not going to look to the right, but you're going to keep your face forward 
and that you're going to forge ahead no matter what's going on around you. You're going to keep your face like a flint. You're not going to let anything keep you from achieving your goal. You're not going to let anything, hallelujah, keep you from seeing the prize, from getting the prize, from going for the prize. You're not going to let anything keep you from that. And if you set your face like a flint, and if your thing is a high goal, you're going to achieve the smaller goals as you get there. Some of the people say, you aiming too high. That's too high. Well, you know what? I'm going to aim high. So even if I don't reach what I'm aiming for, I'm still a whole lot farther ahead of where I was before I start reaching. Amen. So y'all know. I'm, I'm gone. 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 I love God. I love his word. He says, set your face like a flint. Don't fret. Keep moving forward. Get your thing in your mind and keep moving forward. Amen. To be unlimited, you have to resolve that you have to decide firmly Amen. On a course of action or that you are going to take action. You got to be determined that come hell or high water that you are not going to quit until you see or achieve victory. Amen. You are not going to quit until you see or achieve victory. That's how you become unlimited. You become unlimited by moving for you become unlimited because you refuse to stop. You become unlimited because you get your thing. You focus on your thing. You don't worry about somebody else's thing. You don't worry about how your thing is going to affect somebody else's thing when you succeed in your thing. Because we have that too. You, you know that. I'm, I'm going to talk about that. We have that too. Sometimes we know that when we become successful in our thing, we're going to leave some people behind because they're not focusing on their thing. We can't allow that to stop us from moving forward in our thing. Amen. You have to get it together. Amen. I have some great goals before me. I have some great hopes before me. And I know some of you all do too. I know that there's some things that God has given you and he wants you to forge forward. He wants you to push past, push past every obstacle and every challenge. He wants you to push past every fear and every doubt. He wants you to go forward. And I'm here tonight to encourage you. I'm here tonight to, to, to push you. I'm here tonight to excite you. I'm here tonight to let a light a fire up under you to tell you to run after your thing. And I know if your thing is in righteousness, there is nothing that God will uphold from you. If your thing is righteous, there is nothing that God will keep from you. Amen. And he is definitely won't keep the wisdom of the thing from you. Amen. Uh, that is pretty much all that I have for you tonight. I'm just excited because I believe, I believe once we make up our minds and we are determined to do what God has called us to do and to move in the thing that God has called us to move in, that there is nothing that can stop us. Amen. And how, how do you not know that once you step into your thing, it may link you up to somebody else who is already in their thing and you all can go to another level. It doesn't mean that you have to be a partner. It just may be collaborations, but you would never get them if you don't don't step into your thing. If you don't step into the arena, if you don't step into the ring, amen. I'm here to tell you it's time to get your thing. It's time to be the dedicated to your thing. That's how you become unlimited. You become unlimited because you start to move and navigate and navigate in the thing that God has called you into, the thing that God has purposed you for, the thing that you have dreamed of, the goal that you set for yourself. It's time for you to step into it in the name of Jesus. I'm about to pray for y'all because I believe that some of y'all just needed a push tonight. I believe that some of y'all just needed to hear that it's time to jump into your thing with both feet. I say jump into the deep with both feet. That's my saying. It's time for you to jump into your thing. It's time for you to jump into the deep with both feet, baby. It's time for you to start swimming in your thing. Amen. It's time for you to start hitting the ball in your thing. It's time for you to start bouncing the ball in your thing. It's time for you to start writing a book in your thing. Amen. It's time for you to start getting your thing together. Amen. So that you can be prosperous in the thing that God has called you to. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for everyone who is watching tonight, and I thank you for everyone who shall see this later. God, I thank you that you are giving us the wisdom and the understanding of how to operate in the thing in which you have called us to, God. I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to show us how to turn our faces like a flint, Lord God. Let us not see what's going on on the right or on the left, Lord God. Let us stay focused, God. 
hallelujah, and walking in the thing that you have called us to do, oh God. Give us the wisdom in the, of the matter, God. Give us the wisdom on how to navigate the area in which you have called us to, Lord God. Give us the wisdom how to operate in the education. Give us the wisdom on how to navigate, hallelujah, arts and entertainment, God. Show us how to navigate the, the thing of sports, oh God, the field of sports in the name of Jesus. Show us, oh God, hallelujah, how to operate in the, in the mountain of finance in the name of Jesus. Show us, oh God, how to operate, hallelujah, in the church, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Show us how to operate and move in government, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, show us how to operate and move in our families in the name of Jesus. God, even if that thing, oh God, is to be the best wife, oh God, show us how to be the best wife, oh God. Even if our thing, oh God, is to be the best husband, oh God, show us how to be the best husband in the name of Jesus. Even if it's to show us how to be the best son, oh God, or the best daughter, oh God, show us how to do that thing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Wake up every pastor tonight in the name of Jesus, oh God. Stir up their thing in the name of Jesus. Stir up their gifts now, God, in the name of Jesus. Stir up the prayer, God, in the name of Jesus. Stir up consecration now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, show up, oh God, that writing gift, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Stir up the lyrics now, God, in the name of Jesus. Stir up the poems, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, stir up the words, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Show, show, show up. God, and show yourself strong, oh God. Show your people, Lord God, the gifts that you have given them, oh God. Show your people, oh God, the talents that you have given them, oh God. And show them, oh God, how to move them in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I'm asking you to anoint them now, God, in the name of Jesus. Anoint every gift tonight, oh God. Anoint every talent tonight, oh God. Anoint every prayer warrior tonight, oh God. Anoint every pastor, oh God. Anoint every preacher, oh God. Anoint every writer, oh God. Anoint every singer, oh God. Anoint every athlete, oh God. Hallelujah. Anoint every Every actor, oh God, hallelujah, anoint every songstress, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and open up every door, oh God, hallelujah, of success for your people tonight, open up every door to prosperity for your, for your people tonight, open up the door of longevity for your people tonight, open up the door of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus, God, and I thank you right now, Lord God, I thank you, oh God, that they shall begin to bear fruit, oh God, in the earth, oh God, and fruit that shall remain, oh God. I decree and declare legacy tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare unlimited wealth tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare generational wealth now, God, because of honing into your thing in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you and I give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for us, uh, uh, us. Honing into our thing, oh God. I give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor for those who are watching, God. I thank you right now, Lord God, that no one shall fail tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare success tonight in the name of Jesus. It is so, and so it is. Hallelujah. God, I decree that you shall get the glory out of everyone watching, oh God, that you would get the glory as they step into their thing, oh God, that you would get the glory, oh God, out of the prosperity of their lives, oh God, that you would get the glory, oh God, for opening up every door, oh God, to success in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you and I give you glory. Hallelujah. I give you glory, oh God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, oh God, for that one thing. God, I thank you, oh God, that you have given us our thing. Hallelujah. That you have given us, oh God, our area, oh God, that you have given us our industry, oh God, that you have helped showing us how to perfect our craft, oh God, so that you may get the glory out of our lives in Jesus' matchless name. Hallelujah. 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 Now I bless the Lord. Hallelujah for you all tonight. I thank you. I thank God for all that he is doing. Hallelujah. I thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your thing on the altar. Hallelujah. Let God bless it. Hallelujah. If you're confused about that thing, ask God to show you how to move in. Hallelujah. If you're confused, oh God, call on the Holy Ghost because he has, He is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. Let him tell you the truth about your thing. Hallelujah. Let him show you how it works. Hallelujah. Let him show you how to be, be uh, innovative with it. Hallelujah. Let him give you some cutting edge information about your area hallelujah oh my god meditate on it hallelujah ask god to give you the wisdom of it hallelujah and watch him work watch him show you how to work your thing hallelujah god i give you the glory i give you the glory i give you the glory hallelujah 
for your people. I give you the glory, hallelujah, because I cannot wait to hear of the testimonies. I cannot wait to hear of the signs and wonders that are going to be shared, hallelujah. Please let me know. Drop it in the comment. Give me an inbox. When God starts doing things for you, when he starts opening up doors because you're honing into your thing, please drop me a line and let me know, hallelujah. I want to rejoice with you, hallelujah, because the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. So I want to rejoice with you when God begins to open up those doors for you in the name of Jesus. Now, y'all know I cannot leave tonight without asking anyone if they do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. If you heard anything tonight that pricked your soul and you say, you know what, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not, I don't know if this pertains to me. I'm here to tell you that it can, it can pertain to you if you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. All these promises, all these proclamations, all these decrees and declarations, they can belong to you. All this word that I, I spoke on tonight, it can pertain to you. Amen. When you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, I'm here to ask you to, to ask him to come into your heart. If you pray this prayer with me, this next prayer, I'm going to ask you to hashtag in the comments saved, hashtag S-A-V-E-D, and I will contact you later just to talk you through anything that you may want to know. Or if you say, you know what, I am saved, but I've fallen away and I, I got a breach in my relationship with God, but I want to get back to it. I want to get to back to that place where I used to be with him. Well, we're going to pray a prayer of restoration. And if you pray that prayer of restoration, then put hashtag restored in the comments. Put hashtag restored in the comments. Hallelujah. And last but not least, if you heard anything, if you liked anything, if anything that I said tonight pricked your heart and you want to say, you know, well, where did you learn it? How did you get that? What do you, what, what, how do I do this? I'm here to tell you, I learned, I learned how to do what I do. And I learned how to operate in this gift at Kingdom Life Ministries under the pastors of Bishop Alvernus L. Johnson and Pastor Chantel Johnson at Kingdom Life Ministries, 310 South Jefferson here in Saginaw, Michigan. And I, you know, I don't even think I introduced myself tonight. I'm Evangelist Davidia T. White. Oh my God, I just had to jump into this thing tonight. Sorry. Ooh, but if you want to know anything, or how I got to this place. It was because of the leading and the guiding and the mentorship of my pastors, Bishop Alvernus L. Johnson and Pastor Chantel Johnson at Kingdom Life Ministries. If you do not have a church home, I recommend Kingdom Life Ministries to anybody. I've been here over 20 years and it has tremendously changed and impacted my life, even the life of my children and my family. Amen. My family, even in Cleveland, I have family in Cleveland. I'm originally from Ohio and he is impacting that my ch church family is impacting my family in Ohio. Amen. Um, and if you don't need, if you're not in, in Saginaw, you say, you know, I can't get to Saginaw. How could I be a member of that church? Well, you know, we have e-membership. You can be a part of our e-family. You don't have to be here in Saginaw. You can put in the comments, Hashtag KLM and I will show you. I will I will connect with you and find out how we can so that you can find out how we can get you connected. Amen. But let's get back to salvation and restoration. And we're going to be praying. If you don't have a church home, that you will definitely hashtag KLM and I can get you connected. Amen. So let's pray for those who need to need a savior. Amen. Father God, I know that your word says that all have fallen short of your glory. All have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And that means me. Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I believe that he died for my sins and he rose on the third day that I may have eternity with him. God, I thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer, put hashtag saved in the comments. Now for those who want to restore your relationship with Jesus. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that your word says that no man can come unto you unless you draw them. I thank you for drawing me back to you tonight. And I ask, Lord, that you come back into my heart and repair the, and repair the breach in the name of Jesus. I thank you for receiving me back into the fold in the name of Jesus. I thank you for restoring my soul. If you pray either one of those prayers, put hashtag saved in the comments or hashtag restored. And if you need a church home, please put hashtag KLM. And if you don't have a church home and you haven't made that decision, I pray that you soon will make a decision. And even if it's not to join Kingdom Life Ministries, it's that you join a church that teaches the unadulterated word of God. That's all I have for you tonight. 
But before I go, you know, I always have to tell you, if you are part of our You Unlimited Nation, please like, tag, and share. And I will go through the comments, and the person who liked and tagged the most people, I will send you your very own You Unlimited exclusive You Unlimited Nation uh, journal. It's a line journal where you can put your hopes, your dreams, your, your daily affirmations, anything you want to put in there, you can write in this. It's made exclusively for You Unlimited. Amen. Now, also, you know, I have no shame in my game. I always ask you to help me to become an Amazon.com bestseller. If you don't have your um, Pray It, Believe It, See It, the Intercessor's Prayer Journal, if you don't have this in your arsenal, you are missing out. I've gotten so many testimonies from people who are using this. I had a testimony from a young lady who told me that, um, that, she not only uses it, but she had her and her husband sit down and use it together. And they go through the pages and they write down because we have a space in here for who you're thankful, who or what you're thankful for and people that you're encouraging or people that you're praying for your own personal prayers. You can write your scripture for the day. And then we also have um, some spaces where you can do reflections. Those are in the back. Let's see if I can get to those. You can write any reflections in the back. And we also have some um, Bible verses that God gave me, some of my favorite scriptures, and some little nuggets that God told me to share with you all. So if you don't have your Pray It, Believe It, See It prayer journal, please go out there and get that. It's on Amazon.com. I am Javidia T. White, and I would love for you to help me to become an Amazon bestseller. Amen. Well, that's all I have for tonight. I love you guys. I thank you so much for joining me, and I'm looking forward to hearing about you operating in your thing. I'm looking forward to hearing about you being successful in your thing. I'm looking forward to hearing about some miracles, signs, and wonders following you for doing your thing. And that is because doing your thing makes you unlimited. So put in the comments, I unlimited. And I will see you next week. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next week and you are unlimited. Bye. There we go.